In this video I'll be covering the old school boxing stance and style which some of the best boxers in the world have used such as Ray Robinson and Joe Lewis. This video will cover enough techniques for a beginner to be able to be at a competitive level. So take a step forward, turn your body sideways, lift your hands so that they're chin high, put your chin down and then from here you Put your weight mostly on your back leg and that takes your head off centre. You can move around very easily and your elbows are protecting your body and your hands are protecting your chin. You can move your head easily and you can throw all the shots very comfortably while being in this solid position. The first thing you want to learn after you know the start is a drill and it's absolutely essential you learn this drill because this is what's going to make you powerful and quick. So in your boxing stance, elbows are nice and tight and all you're going to do is you're going to pull your shoulders around. So you, I'm going to pull to the left, I'm going to pull to my right, and when I pull to my left my weight goes onto my front leg and then if I pull into the right the same thing, it's going onto my right leg. So I'm pulling my shoulders and I'm moving my feet. And that's absolutely essential to learn because that's how you're going to throw a lot of shots and that's how you're going to move your head. Making sure you're on balance and then if somebody wants to push you, you're not going to go topple over. Your weight needs to be in the middle when you're transitioning. The most basic footwork is so you're in your stance, if you want to move forward, you push off your back foot and you take a step with your lead foot. And if you're going backwards, you push off your front foot and move your back foot. Try to keep on the bottoms of your feet and you're not digging your heel down as you do it. That will slow you down and put your balance. Push and step, push and step, push and step, push and step. All while maintaining your stance. Keep your hands where they're meant to be. Push, step, push, step, push, step, push, step, push. Step, push. Now, if I want to go around my opponent, I'm going to push off my rear leg to go left, same thing, and then I'm moving around and creating an angle. And then this is the other way around, push off your front leg and move your back leg. So I'll be going around you. This is the most basic footwork. So the big no-nos of footwork is to cross your feet like this. Because if I get hit, I'm not going to go down. I've got no balance whatsoever. So you always want to maintain a decent amount of room in between your feet and that's why this drill is so important because you're keeping your balance so all you're doing is that while stepping so you can move your shoulders and step you're keeping that balance always keeping the width you don't want to be going like that, it's way too far. Again, I've got no balance. If I get hit here, I'm going down. So, your feet are a bit more than shoulder width apart normally. That's where you're going to be mobile and with balance. So, you should think that when you're moving, your feet are going to be a little bit wider than that. They're never going to be like that. That's just stupid. 
if you see something fire like this, make sure you hook them and they're going to go that way. They're going to end up on the floor. Once you're comfortable with the stance and that drill where you're moving back and forth, you're putting your weight on your front and back leg or you're turning your shoulders and you're on balance while you do it, and you feel like you've got that, then you need to start throwing punches. So we start off with the jab, it's your lead hand. So you're just pushing your left hand out and you bring it straight back. What I'm doing there is I'm extending my arm in a straight line. I'm not bringing my elbow up at all. If you bring up your elbow, you're going to get hit. If it stays there and it comes back down, if you get into that habit, you're going to get hit. So straight out, straight back, straight out, straight back. Because they're going to want to throw a right hand over the top. And if you bring it back, they should hit you, your guard, your hand. And if you want to add more power into your jab, you go back to your drill. So you're here, you pull your right shoulder back, and you put your weight on your back foot a little bit, and you throw the jab. And that will add a little bit of extra snap. Just because a jab is a fast, snappy shot doesn't mean it doesn't have to hurt. You should be trying to hurt on all your shots because then they're less likely to count you. If somebody's jabbing me and I'm not hurt by it, I'm just going to try and land the right hand over the top. So you want your shots to hurt. You're just pushing your left hand out and then you bring it straight back. And then to get power into it, so if you might jab their guard, and you'll hit their hand and then you try and dig one in to hurt them you're just going to pull your right shoulder around a bit so that's your standard snappy controlling kind of jab and then the power jab is where you really turn into it but you're not pivoting on your foot your foot is dug into the ground you just dig it in you might step and do it but you're not trying to pivot you're just turning your shoulder Right, let's show you the back. Controlling normal jabs. Now, we're going to try and dig in a bit more force. So the idea is you want to mix up the fast snappy ones and your heavy ones together. So the right hand is completed the same way as we do our drills. So we get into our stance and then we pull our left shoulder around while putting our weight onto our lead leg like that. And all we're going to do is shoot our right hand forward. We're going to Go there and straight back to the position. Some people hold it here, some people hold it here. Depends on what you're comfortable with and what range you're at. But the moral of the story is once you've done punching, you bring your hand back to your chin. Doesn't matter if it's in the front where you're at long range and you're like this, and you throw your hand and bring it back there or here. You're not doing this because then you're going to get caught. You keep your hands near your chin, the right hand, and pull it back.
The right hand is a powerful shot. It's excellent for the body and the head. It's a good counter. And all I'm doing is pulling this shoulder around, putting my weight on that leg, and then shooting straight out and straight back. So I'm going to mix in a couple of jabs just to add a bit of flow to it. So you might want to jab up top and then hit them down below. So, or you can just do a standard one two. Or you you're turning your body. Pull that shoulder, put the weight on that front leg and just shoot it out. Some people struggle with the left hook, but I don't see why. If you're doing this drill that I taught you at the start, where you're pulling your shoulder around and you're putting your weight into your back leg, all you're going to do for the left hook is keeping your elbow low, you're not raising it up. Same reason you're going to get hit in the body up. So you keep it low and you, you, you're, you're pulling your shoulder around and you put your weight on that leg. And then all you do is an explosive, that, that's it. But you have to do that in sync to get power into a shot. Do it from a different angle. So I'm just pulling around, doing that drill, and then back, left hook. So here, make sure I'm in the shot, left hook. To do a body shot, it's the same thing, just lower. Having your elbow low may cover up that you're doing a body shot rather than a head shot because you're not going to see it coming. Keeping your eyes on your opponent, so you're here, pull your shoulder around, slam it. Some people like to have it palm in or palm down. Just do what you're comfortable with. Personally, I just... You're pulling your shoulder around, putting your weight in your rear leg, turning, keep that right hand up near your chin, and just hit them. Let's look at some left hooks. You can aim to the body, you can aim to the head. Once you feel comfortable with that basic movement, you're going to want to double it up. You're going to want to go head and body and body and head. So with the left hook, you're going to want to do it off the jab. So I jab their guard, so I can hit their guard like that. Now I'm going to come round. So they might try and parry me. I'm coming round and hitting the chin. The right hook is done in the exact same way as the left hook, except from obviously in reverse. You're in your stance and you're going to pull your left shoulder back and put your body back to your front leg. Exact same thing as we've been doing in this drill the whole time. So I'm moving around and I'm going to come around like this, elbows relatively low, hands up near my chin, and I'm going to come around the opponent's guard like this. So we're here, I'm turning and round. I'm only doing this last little bit with my arm. The arm doesn't have to do much, it's just doing that. That's all it's doing. Because the body does everything else. And here, 
might throw a jab over the top. are basically doing this drill where you're putting your shoulders around, you're distributing your weight and you're just doing a circular motion with your hook and you're aiming for the chin. So in real time it will be something like to the body then to the head. So we're coming in. Uppercuts are extremely short shots. You'll be in your stance and literally all you're doing is turning your shoulder, moving that body weight again and just ripping up. In the sh you, you, you're going up, so you pull your shoulder round, put your body weight onto your rear leg and pull that left hand up. You're not going down and up. Is literally you turn your shoulder and just straight up. Uppercuts are quite hard to do on the hip range, you just don't get that angle. So if you imagine that's going to be their chin, there's, just, there's nothing to hit you. So yeah, they're not really best to be training on. An aqua bag is pretty good for uh, that. So my advice for this would be, be in your stance and you're just going to shoulder box your uppercuts, keeping them tight and just turning your shoulder into it. Keeping everything nice and tight, well on balance, I'm turning my shoulder, I'm moving my body weight. I might step, uppercut, slip, uppercut. Don't drop the hands, so you're not pulling down and then up. You're going from here, up, up, up. You're pushing with the balls of your feet. So if you were my opponent and this is your chin, I'm just going to turn and up. So I'm here, might slip your shot coming at me. It's a very similar movement to the hooks, except for when we, instead of coming rotationally, just going up. So with boxing, the more punches you put together, the more are going to land. A lot of them get blocked. In the pros, you're looking at about 20% average, so only one in five of your shots is actually going to land. So you need to put them together. You need to put them together in a certain way. That, for example, if I double jab, right hand, left hook, it might only be the left hook that actually lands, but you set it up by bringing the guard up they're protecting against your three other shots and then you're going to get them to the body. So if we look at that again. With the fundamentals there are some must-have combinations. The double jab, the one-two, the one-two-three, one-two-three to the body, um, the one-two with the two to the body, we we'll start with that one. So double jab. 
this is going to just get you into range of put it so you can see my feet so I'm out of range, I can't hit him even when it's come to I still can't hit him so step step and that's when you can land extra or if they're coming towards you this is to let them know that they can't walk you down so you can do a fast one and a powerful one If they're having to defend your jabs, they're more likely to then get hit by the other shot. Moving in and moving in. Just like I told you before. So, jab, jab, and then back out. Jab, jab, and then back out. Jab, jab. Right, moving on. One, two. How many people have been knocked out by one, two? Thousands upon thousands upon thousands because it works. Do that a couple of times and aim for the body. So I go and they're going to block it and you go. Body. You're going to want to add on the left hook to the one two because the one two goes down the middle so they defend, which means that their sides are open. So, you want to do it to the body as well. Close range. So you're still in your stance, hands are protecting your chin, your, your body weight is on your back leg, and you should be able to move, do the drill, move with your shoulders, and then we're going to go right hook to the body, left hook up top, and we're just going to keep moving in our stance. Right hook, left hook, move, move, move. So, move, 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 and then you add a bit of pace to it, and then you want to get a little bit out of it, don't So keep doing that drill where you're moving, you do the right hand to the body, left hook to the head, and it's just start doing it any you can do. Right hook to the body, left hook, right hook. You can keep moving. Right hook, left hook, right hook to the head. So or When you're first starting out in boxing, your coordination is poor. That's why you find it so difficult to do things in balance and things just feel uncomfortable. But the only way to get that coordination and make things smooth and powerful and fast is repetition. You, you want high reps all the time. And so a good drill by, when you're starting out is so you you're going to do straight shots and you do this for a three minute round I can put the time wrong anyway, so you do it for a three minute round and you're just doing that drill where you're turning your shoulders moving that way and you're just going to throw shots gently and you're letting your arms go all the way out all the way back all the way out, all the way back and then you might have to adjust your feet a little bit as the bag moves which is good because then you're going to have to stay close to the bag and you can move around the bag and so I'm not doing anything here I'm, I'm literally just touching the bag but that's how you're going to get your coordination is by that constant doing the same movement and then 
when you've got that coordination, then you can start digging the shots. But when you're first starting out, do it nice and gently, in good form, not this. This is a no no, I can't stand this, this one drives me up the wall. This. But the chin is up, you're not in your stance, you're not extending your shots. Look at my arms, they're not doing anything, and they're going, and they're all tired, like box size, it's no good. That's how you measure your range, you're in your stance, you've got your range, and so, and you pull, you're pulling your shots, because you're pulling your shoulders. Pull, 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 and then, once you've got that combination, okay. it's easier. You're going to want to do the same thing for right hands and left legs. So you're in this range, you do it nice and gently. Your feet are at a good width, your knees are slightly bent. You're moving that body weight in between. Your hands are still up. This is going to teach you how to move properly. It's going to teach you how to right hand left foot properly. You might slip and left hook. It's the same movement as a right hand left hook. So you need to master this, you do this thousands of times until you've got smooth, but you're not making mistakes like you're not doing this where your hands are too low. You put nice enough. Put the back and it's you with your feet. Then when you get better, stop adding a shot that's a bit harder. You might go. And then you can mix it up completely. You can then start in your jab. It's very good drill because it's very repetitious. You're having to build your coordination and you have to do thousands and thousands and thousands of the same movement each time. You push it out, put it back straight. Thousands of times. And that's why these drills are so good, because you're not using that much energy. You could do this all day. As long as you're doing it correctly. Another fantastic way to build coordination is a speed bag. The reason why the speed bag is so good is because you can do so many punches in a short period of time, which is key to learning the movements. And you don't get wear and tear from a speed bag. You can punch through the target a thousand times and it won't bruise your knuckles. Whereas a heavy bag has wear and tear on the hands, especially when you're starting out and you haven't developed the stronger bones yet. You can spend hours on the speed bag without damaging your hands. The only problem is, it is very loud. When I'm at home, I don't do any more than four rounds just to not annoy my neighbors. I will have a separate video for the speed bag, but a quick tip is when punching it with the back fist, you can do 10 with one hand, 10 with another, but you have to do it slowly and you'll naturally build the pace without thinking about it. Hit the bag at the bottom where it's the biggest and it try to make a rhythm. It doesn't have to be fast at this point. Don't even think about speed and you will develop that speed naturally. Skipping is another way to build coordination and yes, I will have another video for that too. The main takeaway is you do so many reps where your hands and your feet are working together, which is the same as when you are boxing, your hands and feet should work as one. Skipping is a perfect exercise for this. To start skipping, bounce on both feet and whip the rope around you as you jump. Do this again and again and focus on moving the wrist, not the arms. 
Look at my arms in the video, they only move as much as they need to to move my wrist. Once you have got the timing for both legs, it's time to move on and bounce on one leg. This will get you used to bouncing left right, left right, rather than on both feet all the time. But learn both feet first. There are lots of different skipping ropes. A weighted leather rope will build better endurance whereas a thin wire-like rope will develop better speed. You can make it fun, start doing things like crossovers, uh, double unders, start kicking your legs while you're bouncing on the other one. These are good for building endurance and mixing it up and it just makes it less boring. Shadow boxing is where you practice the movements you have been learning. You can pretend you are fighting someone and you move around them and you practice your footwork and your punches together or you may want to practice a specific movement like slipping and countering. There is no wear and tear on the body and you build coordination very quickly. It's similar to a dancer learning a routine. The more they practice, the easier it gets. And soon enough, they don't need to think about it. They just are able to do it. So if you're going to get hit in the face, you want to glance off. You don't want it to hit you square. If, if, if you get shot, Right in the centre, your head bounces back and it looks crap for the judges. You don't want the judges to see your head doing this. If, if Robbie lands a jab on me, I want it to be going over like that. Whereas if I'm like this and he lands on, it's going to go all the way through. And that's how you end up getting hurt. You always want one eye on your opponent. So blocks form the biggest part of your defence because when you're throwing a shot, you'll be blocking them, and when they're doing combinations, there's going to be too many shots to step back, parry, or slip your head to, and a lot of times you're just going to have to block. So in the stance, with your knees bent, your hands protect your chin, and your elbows protect your body. You want to think like a turtle, you're going into your shell, you're not bringing your hands up, because then you're going to get hit in the body. So you want to go down into your stance. I'm just going to block, so if you do like a one, two, yes, yes. So my hand is taking the force, but it's still going through my hand into me, so it's not ideal, but it's not scoring shots. So he's not going to score shots from that. And so with hooks, so I'm going to, again, I'm in my stance, I'm going down, so if you just do some hooks. And you want to make small movements, so you're rolling with the shots as well. Now these are not scoring shots, but they're still going to be doing damage if he's hitting you full power. If you do something to the body. So try and time it with your elbows. And you're bending your knees and you're sinking down. So you've got better balance. With the parries, all you're doing is you're in your stance and you're deflecting the shot away from your face. So ideally it's going to go over your left shoulder in that direction. So you'll be like this and you'll parry the shot away with your backhand. How will you stop the jab? So you're going to stop it with your lead hand and then you can get them with the right hand counter. Stop the jab coming in. And you can use your right hand counter. With my lead hand, it can stay out there, so it can cause a, it, it's like a fencer with his sword out. So the idea is that it's traffic, it's something we're going to have to go through. But you have to bear in mind, if your arm is out, then your chin is exposed. So you have to keep that angle, you have to keep your shoulder protecting your chin and your right hand is defense. When he jabs, I'm going to step to the right and I'm going to push on his, on his jab, creating an angle. So I'm getting away from his right hand by doing that. And if he was to throw right hand, 
It's difficult for him, but my hand is there, I'm too far away, my hand is up, he can just walk into one of my jabs or one of my own right hands. So I've got the advantage here. So the lead hand can control your opponent. So at the moment it's going to be hard for me to hit him because that's in the way. So what do we do? We're going to put it down. So and that's the idea. Is we're going to hit it out of the way. You can jab it out of the way. The idea is you're moving his lead hand so you can land your rear hand, your right hand. You want an active lead hand. You can also trap them. So, if I want to land a right hand to the body, for example, my lead hand might trap his arm. So here, he can't really hit me with that lead hand because it's trapped. Technically, all I'm doing is I'm still blocking. I'm blocking myself. I'm in my guard. But he's trapped. But I can get his body. I'm trying for a right hand, but again, I've got the advantage because I'm on the outside and I've got the angle. It's all about having that angle. You want to be able to hit. And so he's going to find it really tricky to do anything when you're pushing his lead arm into it. You're controlling it. You're controlling your opponent. With the lead hand, you can do feints. So a feint, again, is controlling them. So I might... That's about controlling He's thinking I'm going to jab, and I might lift too. You can fight with the foot, you can fight with the shoulders. But it's about making him think you're doing something that you're not. So if he keeps parrying to get around the left hook, the shoulder roll uh, is used because your chin is down and you have an angle where your shoulder is higher than your rear shoulder. So you can get away from his shot and turn into it, which then loads up your own right hand and protects you. If he throws a right hand, my chin is still protected. He may hit me up here, but that's not a vital shot. If you get hit with the chin, it's vital. If you get hit up on your temples, I mean, it, it, it can hurt, but it's not going to knock you out as such, unless they've got a cracking shot. But that's why you do all the other stuff. That's why you roll with the shots. That's why you're slipping and you're always moving and you're stepping back and you're weaving. Because you're you're harder to hit, and if they do hit you, it minimises the damage. To slip is that the punch is going over one of your shoulders, you're turning away from it. So you're in your stance, and all you have to do is, what we've been doing in this drill, is turning your shoulders and putting your body weight on either leg. So you're going to turn, like that, and that is you slipping. You keep your hands near your chin, your elbows near your rib cage, and you slip. So if he was to throw a jab, I just turn my shoulder, put my weight on my back leg. So you need to be careful with sipping on the inside because then you're going to be walking straight into his right hand and he does a one and two, then bang, I'm going to get hit. I sip the one, bang, I get hit by the two. So that's what you have to be careful with. So ideally, you stick to the outside of the right hand rather than the inside of the jab. It can be done, but you've got to be very careful with the right hand. So I'll sit the right hand. Yes. And then, what you want to do is get used to slip and pull. Slip and pull. You're pulling your shoulder around just the same as normal left hook, 
And you just, you look at this, so we do it slow mo, I slip, bang, you've got such an easy target there, and then you can go over the top as well. You want to keep your right hand near your chin while you're doing it, you don't want it to drop. You want to keep the right hand there, slip. And that's why I've practiced doing the body and the head and the head and the body so that we can pick either shot that we want to pick. So we go, slip, bang. And that's why you want to get your shots back as quick as possible because then you're not leaving that opening. You, you're there and you're straight back as quickly as possible, which means you're less likely to get counted. This is another important part of defense. So I'm going to stick to the outside of the jab and then do a right hand counter. Flip, bang, right hand. Right hand. And you can do it to the body as well. You can do a short range one where you hook or a, a stand straight. So you stick and back. Stick and then pull that left shoulder around. Bang! Slip, pull. Slip, pull. And then the other way of doing it right cross is to slip on the inside and land the right hand instantly. If you, if you actually can hit the nail, you're going to go bang over the top. You only do the right cross like this once you've got the timing down. So you bang. So Robbie does a good jab here because when he does a jab, his shoulder is protecting his chin. Whereas when, if you get tired and start bringing your hands like that's the time you want to do that cross. But he's always open to the body. Everyone's always open to the body. So you want to slip that in there. Bang. That's the one. I must have done that about ten times in the back. Good easy to time. Yeah. You want to go down while well, keeping your left eye on your opponent. You're using your left eye because that's what is facing your opponent. So you're just going straight down. You're bending your back and your knees slightly, going underneath your shot. This is a close range head movement. You keep your hands by your chin, elbows near your ribcage, keeping that eye on him. So when he throws that left hook to me, I'm going under the hook and I come back up. And the other way of doing that, so you go down and come up, and then you can do a counter to the body, to the head. The same thing with the um, weave to the left, so you're going to weave under, bang to the body. Or to the head. You can also do the upcuts at this point as well. So you come under and bang underneath that way. With the bottom weave, you're like this. The shots will land on your forehead and you're going down. So they're going to hit the top of your head. They're not going to hit your nose or your uh, chin because your, your chin is tucked. You're here. How can they hit your chin? So you're here, and you're slipping and you're weaving. The only way they can hit that is with an uppercut. And then your hands are there ready for an uppercut anyway. And then they will be open for a counter if they do the uppercut. If Robbie was to hit me, and I'm like this, that's not going to do anything. I'm not going to get hurt like that. And then if I'm slipping while he's doing it, and if he is actually hitting me, it's just going to glance off. Do 
do that all of that. Whereas if I'm like this and I'm doing it, bang, um, that's going to be part of my nose, and my eyes are going to get busted up, my lips are going to get mangled. Whereas all you do is turning that down, and you want one eye on your opponent. Right, so we've done ducking and we've done slipping. So then there's a little bit in between, so there's a dip, no, I call it. So it's like a duck, like a slip, and this is perfect for getting the jab to the body, because you want to go down where your chin is protected by the shoulder. If they were to do a right hand, is a perfect counter for this. So if Robbie does a right hand to me, it's not going to land straight on my chin, it's going to land on my forehead. It's not just going to hit me up here rather than on the off switch. So we go down and like that. And hopefully it's a glancing shot or you can use it to smother uh, the opponent. So if a Robbie's rushing me and I've got on ready to block without a stone in and under, I've, I've effectively turned off his off switch just by dipping and stepping into him getting too close to him to punch me, he gives me a few second breather and th from there you can get used to trying to land some body shots or just giving yourself time to recover. So you pull out, you take a step, down and dip, and you, you're just in the way. Maybe they, they come in a bit hard and they go into your shoulder, maybe they win themselves. That'd be a shame. <laughs> An essential part of defence is footwork. Footwork is key in both attack and defence. You have to train your footwork. I don't personally like stepping back with jabs. I think you're better off being in range, trying to counter it with uh, slips and parries and by manipulating their arms. And then stepping back from power shots, you might parry a jab, step back from the right hand. If you're a pressure fighter, you don't want to get too used to stepping back when people jab because you're not pushing them backwards and you want to be parrying their shots and slipping their shots and pushing them backwards. You don't want to be constantly going forward and back constantly as a pressure fire, but then your style might be that you want to go back, create angles. It depends on you. But if you're attacking, try to parry and slip a jab rather than constantly stepping back. You've got a pressure fighter coming towards you, so you're in your stance, <laughs> you're in your stance, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to step back. So even if he does land his shots, they're going to be minimal. And I can come back toward him if I can. Then you can come back. Depends on your start. With a jab, I prefer stepping to the right because you're getting away from their power hand, the right hand, and you, you've got an advantage. You, like we said with the angles earlier, you've got that advantage going on the outside. So if you just stay in your stance and you push off your lead leg and step with your right leg, you've created an angle. So we'll practice that part. So I maintained my stance and all I did was move my foot and then I'm getting away from the power hand. So if he does a one-two, I'm getting further away from that right hand. It's less likely to hurt me and if it was to hurt me, it would be a lot less than if I just stood there and took it, the shots when I was blocking. You want to start combining the defences so you might be here, you might parry and then step back with the right hand. You might parry, slip, and then they're still doing shots and then you do take a step back. You're going to create your own rhythm, create your own drills, but you want to be combining them. You, you want to be blocking and moving back. You want to be slipping and moving in. You, you want to be doing a combination of them. You don't want to just stand there and block, because then you end up getting hurt. If you're going to block, add a bit of footwork to it and then add a slip every now and then and then add some wheels and another slip and a slip and 
block, 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 move, slip, slip, slip. You want to be, be unpredictable with it. The more unpredictable you are, the less likely you're going to get hit and the more dangerous you become. With the corners, you want to be getting away from your opponent. You want them to be in the corner, you don't want to be in the corner. So in the stance, if I'm like this, I'm going to do a quick step out to the right. So here, I literally just step out right, step out right again, and then tables are turning now. And if you want me to stand, if he's like here, and I'm trying to get out that way. So all I'm going to do is push off my rear leg, step with my leg leg, and pivot round. So step round, pivot round, and again, I've made that angle. So all I'm doing here, so you can see, for the camera, is I'm stepping and turning. I'm keeping my hands high when I do it. Because you can walk into a hook. So if, if he hooks me when I do it, if you hook me with the yeah. Line, yeah. yeah, so if he hooks me, it's not going to hurt that much. Whereas if I have my hands low, and then bang, that's going to hurt, isn't it? So you're going to keep your hands high, step around. Even if he does hit you, you can still hit him back. Because I'm, I'll be moving. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get hit hurt as badly. If you're moving, you're not going to get hit anywhere near as bad. I'll put into the video um, about not getting on the end of the punch. So if you're coming into it, you want to smother the shot. There, that's what I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, yeah. A good tip is always think you're looking at them through one eye so that if they do land, it's going to bounce off. If you look at them through both eyes, it's going to go through you. So this video is meant to get you started with good fundamentals where you're on balance, you're powerful, you're quick and you have good technique with your um, defensive responsibility. However, there's a lot that I can't put into this video because otherwise it would just be for hours and hours and hours. So things I haven't mentioned in this video, which I will have other videos for, will be orthodox versus southpaw, fitness training for boxing, boxing specific exercises such as how to use the heavy bag, how to use the speed bag, how to use the double M bag, how to be a pressure fighter and cut off the ring, how to fight a pressure fighter and how to move around the ring effectively. Beginner's Guide to Skipping. There's loads of different combinations and counters and I'll have lots of professional fights where I'll take out that combination or that counter and then I will explain how it works and how to train for it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to help the channel grow and have a great day.